Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. This episode, I want to revisit this nine-piece punch and die set. I did a little bit of a video on it a while back, and one of the things I had mentioned is that some of the complaints with this is that people, when they were using hammers to strike the punches, were damaging or breaking the acrylic uh, top. Now, this top is very important because what happens is this top aligns the the punches to pass through the die or this bottom plate. Without this, what happens is is there's no alignment because it's a very precise because in order to shear whatever piece of metal that you put in between here it needs to be dead on so uh, one of the things I thought about doing is you know well mine isn't broke why don't I just duplicate it so I've got a 3d printer will that work so what I did is I jumped into fusion 360 I have a little bit of that up in the corner so I took a scan of this, which I do a lot for Inkscape, but now that I'm doing more work with Fusion 360, I brought this into Fusion 360, and I used the Calibrate command to calibrate the size of this, and did my layouts, and then basically took a set of calibers and measured you know, all the cross sections of this and created a new one. And I went ahead and I 3D printed it out and it actually worked. So I was pretty impressed with this. So I printed this in PEG. I definitely recommend PEG or ABS for this, uh, or maybe even nylon. I think I'll give, give nylon a try next. Um, I think nylon would probably be the best. Now, one of the things I want to mention if you do this, because I will have the files out on Thingiverse for this, um, is there is some slop in these bolts so to get this lined up you need to put several of these pins in like this now what I did is I actually inverted the pins so I used the top going down to line this up and then once it was lined up I actually tightened these bolts down to ensure I, I got a perfect fit uh, going down. So I wanted to share that tip with you and I also want to share that I have this out there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm also going to put um, two of the uh, two STLs out there. So there'll be this one which I'm going to call tight and then I'm going to call one loose. So this one is the exact measurements of these holes. Now when you print, 3D print the plastic, what happens is you get contraction. And so there is a bit of contraction. This is very, very tight. So what I'm going to do is do another one where I open it up about 0.1 or 0.2 millimeters each one of the holes. Um, because usually I find, I usually go about 0.2 millimeters. Uh, this is about, that's about what I experience on, on, on contraction in the plastic, for, especially for like PETG, etc. Uh, so I have that one out there. So if this one happens to be too tight, um, you can go with that one. Now the other pieces, I'll also put the uh, Fusion 360 file out there. So you can go into Fusion 360 and you can modify this because one of the other things I'm going to do in a separate video is I'm I'm designing up registration blanks to go in the space here because one of the pieces there's about a two millimeter gap here and what I want to do is use this for punching holes and coins and so if I have this penny how do I perfectly center it here so this is one of the problems and especially since this is opaque unlike this clear one because even even with a clear one how do I get that perfectly centered so what I'm gonna do is use this as a template uh, to design up registration cards that go in here and index the coin to the exact location. So I'll do more on that in another video. I just kind of wanted to share that with you guys. So the files are out there. So if you want to take and modify this, you can do a couple different interesting things other than just replace maybe your broken um, uh, acrylic top because I know I'd get the question, you know, well, how am I going to see it, you know, you know, Mr. DIY 3D tech.com if it's opaque. Well, that's how you can do it. Make a registration card, slide it in there, hit your coin, and boom, or whatever other piece of metal you have. Now, the other piece is because uh, I will have the um, uh, file out there, you can export the Fusion 360 uh, sketch to a, D a DXF file and you could also laser cut yourself a new one. Now what you might be saying is, hey, this is almost a 10 millimeter thick piece of plastic or maybe it is 10 or 12, it's, it's, it's pretty thick. Um, you know, I don't have a laser cutter that can cut that thick. Well, here's what you can do. Just get some thinner acrylic, cut a couple of them, and glue them up together. You know, I would put the pins through here so they're indexed while the glue is setting up. But again, you can create your own. So, 
Hopefully you found this interesting. Also, if you have something else like this, this is really a good trick uh, to use to calibrate scanning the part. Now, I've done a lot of this in Inkscape and uh, Tinkercad and OpenSCAD, uh, but it works just as well in Fusion 360. So again, hopefully you found this interesting. The bell button will be over there, which means go down, hit that bell so you're notified of new videos when I put them out. And then also Swag Shop up in the corner. Don't forget, support our channel, a lot of cool maker swag, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.